Hey everybody, today is uh, Wednesday, February 20th, 2019, and the tool hoarding gods have smiled upon me again. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago that I was just uh, describing uh, an unusual find in January. A couple of days ago, I spotted an ad on Craigslist. Actually, over this past weekend, I spotted an ad on Craigslist. Made arrangements to meet the guy a couple of days ago here in town. He actually lives about 40 minutes away, but he was had some business to do in the area and was uh, willing to meet me. So we literally got this deal done in a parking lot. He described himself as a uh, retired engineer who was uh, deciding to get rid of some of his tools. The uh, ad he posted it, I guess, initially on Friday or Saturday, and I guess he met with uh, somebody uh, or a couple of people before I was able to get in there. So I don't know what I missed out on because he he was doing a good job of editing the Craigslist ad and removing photos and descriptions of items that he had already sold. I uh, was able to get a few deals there. Um, no no smoking hot deals, but I did get a couple items I will probably be reselling, and I did get a couple items I'm gonna keep for myself, and those are uh, kind of interesting, so we'll take a look at those. Also, today, uh, I hit the used tool store, and I got a, I scored a couple, a couple of neat little items there. Uh, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll take care of the tool store items first, because there's less of them, and uh, they're actually, on the bench right now in my way. Then we'll dive into this uh, this mini hoard that I picked up a couple days ago. So the first item I spotted, oh here it is, was this nice tap handle. This is a nice Starrett tap handle. This is a uh, this is a model 91B. So as far as I know, there are only four in the series A, B, C, and D. So this is the B sized one, and um, I actually have an A. And oh no, sorry, I have a C, and I have one that looks like a Starrett, but isn't labeled. Um, but it's a dead giveaway for it. And I think this is it right here. Yeah, see this one right here. This is almost the same exact thing as this, but I can't find any markings on this. But I think because of the size, this might be a, an A. Either that, or it's a very well-made uh, copy. Somebody may have just decided to make a project and and make one. This one's marked but it looks like it's stamped by probably the owner's initials. This one is uh, engraved. If I could find only one thing wrong with this it's that it's engraved with the previous owner's name and there is a little bit of damage right there but it's minimal. So I have one of these already right here. Okay so this one is nowhere near as nice and clean so I'll keep this one we'll upgrade <laughs> and I'll put this one on the market and then this is a 91 um, this is an earlier one I could tell because the way it's marked differently yeah it just looks a little bit different the scripting on there so and then um, I actually had this one and it's funny because there's no markings whatsoever on this one but this also looks like a 91B, but it's proportionally sized a little bit different. And if you notice, if you look real closely, you can actually see that there's a difference in the way that this radius is on here. So I think what this is, is I think this is an actual uh, shop-made copy. And they did a fairly decent job of pulling it off. So that could be a nice tap wrench for somebody who's not hung up on, you know, having the the cachet of the Starrett name. Oh, no, I do have a 91A. Here's a 91A I picked up somewhere. I still kept a <laughs> sticker on it. They had six bucks on it. I think I got this at the one of the shows. I bundled this together, and I think I was even able to get this for five bucks, which is a hell of a steal for a 91A. So we get the, uh, we get the A, and... We get the B, and then, like I said, I'll have to check. I don't know if I've got the C, and I'm almost positive I don't have the D. The D is a really large uh, one, and um, they they trade all day long for over 100 bucks on eBay. Anyways, so we'll be able to figure out <clears throat> what to keep and what to go. So Steve's basement's going to have some tap handles coming. 
Although I actually, one of my buyers is in communication with me right now about buying a tap handle, so some of those might not even make it to, to being posted. <laughs> and then, <laughs> you're gonna get a kick out of this. Look what I did, I bought another surface gauge. Um, I bought this surface gauge when I had just, I've just pretty much gotten rid of most of my extra surface gauges and got to a point where I was like, oh good, I, I, I don't have too many of those now, you know? Um, and then this one came up available at the tool store and I looked at it uh, long and hard and cannot find any maker's mark on it. I do not think this is shop made though because it's got this almost chrome plated finish on it so it tends to scream um, you know mass produced covering the price here because I haven't taken it off yet this is going to be this is going to be available um, the other thing that struck me as unusual about it, this actually is cleaning up, this is wiping right off, so this is going to clean up to be a very nice, very nice, fancy schmancy surface gauge for somebody. The other thing that struck me odd about it was it's got this bent rod, okay? Um, everything's working really well on it. It's got this bent rod, and then it's got a very small rod here. So I got one more chance of maybe identifying this, as sometimes the maker's name will be on this rod. Nope. So if anybody, um, if this looks familiar to anyone, let me know. I'd be interested to know. You can see that almost a chrome plating on it. That's a neat one. So, main thing I went for today was um, I wanted to grab this uh, this automatic center punch. This is a Starrett. The tip's in really good shape. Sometimes the tips are slaughtered on these things. And this is a model 18A. I'm pretty sure I've got one of these. So, uh, that'll probably be I'll take a look at my other 18As and whichever one I, I'll keep one and sell one. Or, I don't know, I might even have more than one of these now. That's a nice tool to have. So it's got a spring-loaded mechanism in it and what happens is as you push down on it, it pre-charges the spring and then it'll reach a point where it'll, uh, it'll release and it'll actually act like a little hammer and it'll make a divot right in the metal. And that's called an automatic center punch. He has a uh, little box there, a little box of just all kinds of junk thrown in it. And he puts different prices on the boxes. These were in the items in this box are $6 each box, which is a little higher than, you know, your typical junk box. But, uh, what I found living in there today, I usually check those boxes, so I think he might have just added these recently, is these two Jacob's Chucks. This is a Jacob's Chuck number 0B, and this is a capacity of 0 to 530 seconds by the looks of it. Alright, so this you can put right in a collet and use right on the mill for very small drills. And uh, there's no sensitive attachment on here, so you can uh, readily snap small drill bits with this, which is great. Seriously though, um, you know, that's, that's a nice little find for six bucks, I think. Not a killer, okay? And then there was this other one. This is on a little Morse taper. It's interesting, on the taper, it actually says part number A0100, uh, Jacob's Chuck Arbor. So this is a genuine number one Morse taper, uh, Jacob's. 
arbor, okay, to a zero Jacobs taper, and we've got, I think, another zero. And again, zero to five thirty seconds, but this one is a number zero. I don't know what the difference is between these two chucks right here, but one is a uh, zero and one is a zero B. I can see that on the back of the zero B, the design's a little bit different here. So maybe it's the size of the Jacobs taper in the back that this is pressed into. I don't know. So 12 bucks for this pair. Sweet little chucks. Another Sterrett screw pitch gauge. This is a this is a number 40 Sterrett screw pitch gauge. These are handy to have, definitely. And it's in really good condition. Um, that's going to be a little resale item because I've got several of these and actually I've got another screw pitch gauge I'm going to show you uh, shortly which will also be coming up for sale that I couldn't pass on meaning I couldn't couldn't pass on the uh, on taking it I tend to find that a lot of the steroid items at the used tool store are are exorbitantly priced. This being such a small item, it was it was still reasonable. Um, I'm only going to make probably a couple of dollars on this as profit, but it's going to be one of those things where I'm probably going to be able to add it to somebody's order and make them happy, especially if they happen to be one of my customers who's in one of the parts of the country that uh, has a, uh, you know, less access to this kind of used stuff. So, a little Sterrett number 40 screw pitch gauge. This I bought just to round out the total of what I was buying today. So this was marked a buck. And this is a X-Acto knife uh, blade handle. So this little slotted collet on the end here, you just loosen this up and an X-Acto knife blade will fit right in there and this tightens right down on it and it gives you a nice handle for using X-Acto knife blades and this is an actual X-Acto brand X-Acto knife blade handle and that was a buck and I'll keep that and then there were these I, I, I almost passed on these I'll tell you what I paid for these I paid two bucks a piece for these and this is um, four brown and sharp branded punches small ones didn't occur to me till after I left and I got home and looked at them and realized these are duplicates two and two so I'll probably sell a couple of these no sense in having this many of them but I mean for this little punch I didn't even look these up yet but I I was kind of surprised usually little punches like this you get them for 50 cents or a buck. And I think what drove the price up on these is that they're brown and sharp. Well, I tell you, these are early brown and sharp by the looks of the scroll on it. I'm not even going to try and look at this with the camera. But these are marked uh, 76-4. So that's, um, that's probably a dash 4 is the size. So these are 70... What did I say? 767. So these are 767 punches. Well, I found a couple of these uh, eight-piece complete sets for on eBay, and they sold for one sold for fifteen, and one sold for twenty-five, and that was for eight pieces. So I guess that's that's how he must have arrived on a pricing of two bucks a piece for these things. Last couple items at the used tool store were these little organizers. Uh, he had uh, several little organizers there with uh, hardware and junk in them, and. Basically, it's, it's you buy it and you get the contents with it. Um, there were a lot of the plastic drawer organizers, and I wasn't interested in those. I've got a few of those now I don't use, but these caught my eye. I kind of liked them. Um, the other thing that caught my eye was that he only wanted two bucks a piece for these, and there was two of them, and they stack, so that's kind of neat. And um, in the first drawer I looked in, it's like, oh, well nothing wrong with that got some good there's actually some good usable nuts in there some smaller ones in the back here these little uh, these little captive nuts 
these self-locking ones with the nylon in them. Uh, they're a little pricey in the store now. So this draw has these cheap, cheap screws in there, but yeah. This one's got some some carriage, some small carriage bolts. See even some used hardware in there. Look at that. Oh well, what's this? That's interesting. Why does that look like a inside of a ball valve to me? Some sort of a centered brass deal. All right. Oh, more cheap ass screws and oh, look at these pretty blue ones. Those look like they might be almost like masonry screw, screws. Oh, I know what these are. These are garden hose gaskets. I wonder how... Actually, you know what? They're not all dried out. Probably still usable. Yeah, Alright, so... Four bucks for all that. It's a good deal. If I had just gone and tried to buy the couple items that I really wanted out of this lot, um, and um, what would have happened there is he would have stuck to his asking price, or probably close to it, and it just wouldn't be worth it for me. So the key to this deal was um, putting together enough items and giving, a, uh, giving an offer on the lot, the whole bundling concept again. Um, is what paid off here and even in the end I'm still into this for more than I really would like to be uh, you know on a good day you make enough profit on everything you picked up so that you can pay for the couple of items you wanted to keep for yourself and it's a break even on a really good day you even make a little bit of money on the end uh, this is not going to be one of those situations here I'm into this stuff for more than I care to be but I did get some you know okay deals on um, on the items I wanted so let's start with the stuff that I'm probably gonna send down the road first and foremost all right this is marked MVJR touch probe but what's in here is a category 40 touch probe for a uh, CNC machine now I don't know anything about these so, those of you who watch my channel and know what the heck uh, I've got here, please feel free to chime in and enlighten me. I'll tell you what I do know about this. I know that this is an import. Uh, this is marked BIG, B-I-G, um, LC Touch Probe Model LCP56. All right. Now, the uh, big is short for um, big industries, and I forgot what the the name, the Asian name is that's associated with that. But I was able to find it. So when I try and Google this and find information, most of what I find is like catalogs, brochures, or PDF files that are all in what appear to be Chinese. I have not been able to really find anything. I find the occasional eBay listing for a Cat 50 one of these, but they look a little bit different. Uh, this appears, other than this little bit of surface rusting right here that looks like it may have been cleaned up, I don't know, or staining, whatever it is, it doesn't look like it's in horrible shape. Um, I don't even know how this works because I don't understand how does this send a signal to tell the machine when it's touched the edge you know so that shows how naive I am so the problem is I have no way of testing this and this is exactly what the guy said to me when he sold it to me he says I have no idea if it works he even went as far as to make the offer to me that if I find that it doesn't work um, he'd be willing to give me my money back on it. Now, I have no machine that can use this. 
So this is something I've got to resell. And the conundrum, of course, is, well, how do you resell something if you have absolutely no idea whether it works or not? And my answer to that would be, well, you just sell it real cheap <laughs> so that, uh, you know, with the uh, you basically sell it as is, unknown condition. But I don't know if there's something missing. I don't see any place where any wires... I saw another one of these where you actually hook a wire up to it and then the wire must hook up to the machine to tell, you know, to send the signal. I mean, how does this transmit any information back to the machine? And, and does this only work on certain machines or, or what? So, I'm at a loss on this one, guys. So, uh, I took a chance on this. And if I had known that it was such an obscure Asian one, and not something that could be readily found, you know, the value could be found, then I probably would have just passed on it altogether. But if anybody knows more information about this, and can share it with me, I would appreciate it. I have to try and figure out some way to sell it. There is a machine shop not too far from here that years ago I actually had uh, them make a part for me. Um, actually what it was was I needed some cylindrical grinding done and at the time I didn't have a tool post grinder or a lathe large enough that could handle it so uh, I went to them and had them do that work for me. I struck up a conversation with the guys and they seemed like pretty pretty decent guys. I might be able to go back there show them this and ask them whether or not this is something that they could actually test on one of their machines. Next item I'm probably going to keep and it's this machinery's handbook guide 23 revised edition now when I first saw this advertised and he was asking three bucks for it I jumped on it it was one of the first things I saw in his ad that made me think oh I gotta take that uh, a couple other books coming up in a moment here but anyways this book for three bucks I was like wow and what I didn't realize because it totally just flaked on it was this is the machinery's handbook guide it's not the machinery's handbook so I don't have a 23rd edition machinery's handbook I have the 24th edition so this is the machinery's handbook this is the book that most people know about and this is typical of what the machinery's handbook looks like it's big okay tons of information in here so when I first saw this I thought I was looking at the 23rd edition of one of these but this is the guide and I am about to find out what the heck this is because it's a little itty bitty thing, a little hardcover book alright so this apparently is a companion to this but my question is what does this do now Mr. Pete uh, Lyle 222 he just did a uh, really nice little um, video all about the uh, machinery handbook, uh, the machinist's handbook, I think it's called. Which I've got one of those, too. That was the competing book that was competing against this for a while, but is now no longer in print, whereas these continue to go. Um, and some of the other books that they've come up with over the years that uh, are really... Uh, good references but he didn't show one of these and he didn't mention it so I was actually when I saw his video come up I said well that's kind of that's kind of funny that he's deciding to do a video on that now of all times when I just acquired this so I actually commented and I asked him about it so I, I haven't seen if he's replied yet he's usually eventually replies to as many of his comments as he can um, pretty good about that considering he's a you know a rock star in the uh, YouTube machinist world but anyways, so this is the uh, Machinist Handbook 23rd edition. So if I look at the table of contents, well, actually, maybe it says it right here. This is 23rd edition companion. Hundreds of examples and test questions on the use of tables, formulas, and general data and machinery's handbook. Selected especially for engineering and trade schools, apprenticeship, and home study courses to ensure the most effective use of the handbook and a thorough knowledge of its contents. Oh! 
Oh, this is a textbook, so to speak, on the subject of proper use of the tables and formulas provided in the big book. The purpose of this book, an engineering handbook is, essential, is an essential part of the equipment of practically all engineers, machine designers, draftsmen, tool engineers, and skilled mechanics in machine shops and tool rooms. The daily use of such a book, with its various tables and general data, saves a lot of time and labor, but to obtain the full value of any handbook, the user must know enough about the contents to apply the tables, formulas, and other data whenever they can be used to advantage. One purpose of this book, which is based on Machinery's Handbook, is to show, by examples, solutions, and test questions, typical applications of handbook information in both drafting rooms and machine shops. Ah! All right, so that's probably not going to be, not exactly going to be, oh, it's got a Library of Congress number. Probably not going to be very useful to me. Ah, you know, who knows? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go in this book very rarely. In fact, the 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 black book, um, as they call it, is probably probably would be a perfect fit for me. Um, but anyways, so that's what that's what this is. I only paid three bucks for it. So, but the other two books that he had, I'm really happy about, and they are. Very nice condition. Good copies. Volume 1 and Volume 2 of Machine Shop Practice. Yeah, now this I can really get into. Yeah, there's a good example of just one of the many things that I can learn from a book like this. Using the adjustable parallels to measure with an outside micrometer to measure an inside slot. This is a copyright in 1981. So anyways, I got this pair of books for 20 bucks for the pair. I thought that was a really good deal. I think I'm really going to enjoy these.